Andor, Season 1, Episode 12, the finale. Andor, Season 1, Episode 12. Which planet is this? This is Ferex. And this is the unidentified town on Ferex, which we looked up. <laughs> I mean, it's also on Wikipedia. It is the unidentified Ferex town. So we will just call it Ferex. So Ferex, Ferex here. I see up here on the, um, the cliff tops, like way up here. This looks like the salvage yards we've seen with cranes and stuff. And then this area here through the middle looks like the town itself. And mm, then, sitting in the valley. Yep, sitting in the valley, like we said, with the bell tower and how the sound works, you know. And then yeah. this is, I guess, the new imperial zone down here that's just been built. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it's just cool to see... Uh, this town on Ferex from different perspectives. It's a huge, mm. actually a huge town with a diversified economy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, good place to live. Yeah. I'd stop by in the next MMO. <laughs> oh boy, this conversation that they have in public, like they could have, they could have had this conversation. What they needed to not say was the name Cassian. They slipped, they said it, people heard. That's right. And to have these conversations like that out in the open in town, I mean, I guess they're not, they're not spies. They're not like thinking in terms of. But they, but they here. said they know the empire is here and they're looking for Cassian. Don't say Cassian. That's right. And I think in this episode of this guy back here yeah. is an Imperial spy. Or at least hired by the I mean, Empire. He's like willing. He's at least willing to defect from his local Ferex people. That's like, right. He's a traitor. There he is. He's willing to trade. Yeah. Yeah. So these guys are having this conversation way too casually out in the open for people to hear. And the spies are there. Yeah. Empire's listening. What's going on in this shop in the background here? Is it, Are these welding? <laughs> They're yep. welding, yeah. They're trying, to, yeah, yeah. So after the empire came in, the people of Ferex like, you know what? We need to get real money into this place. We need to get out of this. So they switched the industry to pot raising. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Maybe the huts have hired him. Hmm. Hey, they have the know-how for sure. Ooh, this is this is Salman's son. Salman's son is named um, uh, Wilmon. Wilmon, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And. You made a terrorist out of this kid. Like you killed his dad for for having a store effectively. He, he, this kid may not actually know why his dad was taken. But dad was taken, he was tortured, and he was hung. That's right. Sometimes if you come down with justice, that can help your cause. But if you come down with just brutality and who knows what, just people are dying left and right, you create rebellious people. Yeah. If they come, if the empire comes down with the gavel, well, I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you do to me sticks, that's off me, sticks to you. And I'm going to do that I, in a pipe bomb. I'm going to do that in a pipe bomb. That's what that saying meant. Was yep. when, somebody <laughs> talk, <laughs> when somebody talks <laughs> shit, throw a pipe bomb at them. Yep. Yeah. So I, I grew up in the hard streets of the Upper East Side. <laughs> you can see this determination on his face. He's like soldering. Right now, and he's like, I'm, I'm doing I'm it. A, I'm gonna I'm I'm solder this bitch. I'm gonna solder it so good. Mm. Actually, if I remember, he makes a cold solder joint. <laughs> he, he did not solder it well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like oh. just pressing down on the solder until it melts in. Melts in. Oh, you should heat the element and then dip the oh, solder in so right, it yeah. flows through. Yeah. So, uh, fortunately, it worked though. Yeah. Hey, it just has to explode. It doesn't have to look pretty. It only needs to explode once. That's right. So this is Mom Mothma. She's in the taxi, or I guess it's not a taxi. It's more like a limo with her driver from the yeah, Senate. It's her, it's her personal limo, yeah. And she suspects that her driver right here is an agent of the ISB, or at least being he's informing the ISB of what's going on. He, and, he, she suspects he might be because like her driver got changed in a time when she was being potentially observed. So it's, it's, it's suspect. Mm -hmm. 
and Mon Mothman knows her finances are getting looked at, so she accuses her husband, who has had a gambling problem in the past, of gambling now, which then the driver overhears and then reports to the ISB as a legitimate reason why her funds are getting depleted, but actually the funds are going to the, the rebellion. But the legitimate reason is that the husband has been gambling again, throwing her husband under the bus for the rebellion. So in the relationship, she's actually the toxic one. Like he's, he's got his vices, but he's changed. He's not gambling anymore. Mm -hmm. At the same time, she's doing it to save the galaxy from tyranny. So worth it. true. But the rebellion starts at home. Starts at home, yeah. By throwing your partner under the bus. Throwing your partner under the bus, do it. I mean, if she tried to bring him on board with the rebellion, would she? Would he say yes and go along with it? I don't think so. I think she turn. What if the husband would turn Mon Mothma in? What if she made it super fun for him? Huh? 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 Oh, because he's a partier. He's just exactly. she needs to invite exactly. him to the the rebel parties. That's all needs yep. to happen. She needs to learn some psychology about how to work with people. That's right. And you know what? The, the rebel rebellion right now is living in the underworld. And you know what happens in the underworld? The huts, organized crime, gambling. He'd love it. That's right. That's right. She, she just Maybe he could be work. super suave, super charming. He could really connect to people in the underworld. That's right. This could be his calling. Mon Mothma might be missing an opportunity here. Recruit your husband. Or kill him. Well, there. Yeah. Sinta. Sinta and... and uh, Vel, yeah. Vel. So I didn't catch this in episode, what did, episode two or three? And oh, it's Cinta and Vel have, have a thing going on. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't realize. But here I picked up they, on some relationshipy vibes going on. They have they have a relationship that, from Cinta's perspective, it's much more like we're here, we're having fun, we have a connection, but really our, our true mission is the rebellion. I think Vel caught feelings. I think she mm -hmm. she really likes Cinta. Yeah. And so when Cinta is like focused on the mission, she's focused on observing the the ISB guy, and Vel's like, please, like, please interact with me. I felt it for Vel. Mm -hmm. But Cinta's better for the rebellion. Yeah. She's a she's stone cold killer. So this is when Cassian shows back up. I think stupidly on Varix. Like he just should not have gone. It's not worth it. Not have gone. Yeah. Um, but he shows up to Bix's uh, place, and this guy is here. <laughs> I was like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, I thought um, he was just like a, a hobo squatting. <laughs> squatting. <laughs> it turns out it's Pegla. It's it Pegla. turned out it's Pegla, and, and he uh, he runs the, the junkyard. Yeah. The shipyard. So, junkyard. so he's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's not just some bum. Yeah. yeah. This is a uh, so this is one end of the conversation. Uh, Miro is on Ferrix talking to I forget his name. Parta Partagas. Partagas, that's right. Major Partagas. And they are discussing the operation to get Krieger. And apparently, which was, was successful. Everyone killed. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is killed. And Miro's like, well, what about the intel from right. the operation? You killed everybody. Now we're not going to get any intel. And headquarters is like, we don't give a fuck. Everyone, success. Yep. But who's going to be right? I really like Miro. I mean, that's right. That's the heads up play. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's more than just killing people. There's more, there's mm -hmm. information we gathered and she's mm -hmm. got a point. There should be somebody in the room saying, giving pushback, saying like, yes and no pros and cons. Like we should think about it at least. I think she yeah. should be promoted hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what's going on with this, uh, map looks topographical. I think that must be Krieger's base. Must be this is a building on a planet, and then these lines are elevations. I think so. And then the, the red circles maybe are explosions or targeted Interesting. targets. Interesting. 
Yeah, I don't know. Why are some of them red and filled and some of them are empty? Hmm. Maybe red and filled means target acquired and munitions sent and it's exploded and that's the radius. Whereas the red with nothing in it, munitions haven't been sent yet, but that's a target. Mm. But it's like dialed in for it could be bombarded. Yeah. Okay. Hi bye. Yeah, that's my, that's my best. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Did you get Darth Maul vibes here? Very, very much so. Yeah. It felt like what, it, right? on Tatooine, Darth Maul like lands far away in the mountains, gets on his individual speeder, and then speeds off into town. This is and exactly it's like what Luthen's doing. It's, it's not like a speeder like that the stormtroopers have, where it's like that very long front and you like you like a lean back kind of thing. Um, this is this short, compact, front forward motorcycle looking thing. Yep. That's right. Luthen's got the best gadgets. He does have the best gadgets. He's like this 70-year-old man with all the best gadgets speeding around on the planets, you know, in the outskirts of the rim. Mm-hmm. Actually, where is Ferex? Is it, it that's what where is it? It's not in the rim, is it? It's something in the free trade zone, if I remember. Let's find out here. Planet Ferex, where is it? It is a in, Ferex was an inhabited red, reddish barren rocky planet with very little plant life located in the free trade sector of the galaxy which is oh, oh, oh can you look on the right morlani system morlani system do they have an imperial map here i don't see it, it. sounds like oh oh so mm-hmm. reading this first line yeah the Morlani system, also known as Morlana system, was a star system located in the free trade sector that contained the planets Ferex and Morlana 1. Yeah. So I guess Morlana, the Morlana system is the star system. And one of the mm-hmm. planets is Morlana 1. <laughs> and one of the other planets is Ferex. That's right. So like they're like the nearby planets. So the, hyper, the sure. hyperspace jump in episode like two or three, where the corporate goons go to Ferex is actually inside a single star system. An in-system jump, sure. So still don't really know if this is near the core or in the rim I or don't somewhere. Know. I don't, I don't know. know. That's okay. Can we look on the on the right side there? On yep, the picture? Right. It says sector, free trade sector, orbits, Ferrix, Morlana 1, Morlana 4. <laughs> yeah. So cool, cool name you can mention. Yeah. yeah. Ferrix, and the free back. The free trade sector, it just says it's an area. Sure. It doesn't really say where it is. Okay. We can look that up another time. I was also looking at map. the, we had a question about Ferrex, whether the red on the planet was life, like algae blooms or plant life with red chlorophyll or something, or whether it was mineral deposits. I think it's pretty clear from this picture. It's, it's iron ore, probably. I think so. Yeah. It's reasonable for there to be iron around the galaxy. Just yeah. from the cores of stars. Seems yeah. reasonable. Yeah. I guess it's like a Martian-ish surface. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the driver. This scene. I was like, he works for the ISB. I mean, didn't we, didn't, didn't we know that already? It was like implied he's listening stuff. Maybe he could have just been a, like a, some pervert, like listening to their, their private conversation. But here, like... This is the first time you see it for sure. He's in the ISB. Yeah, it's weird that he actually goes to the ISB. Shouldn't he just be like That's right. either dead That's drop right. or That's just right. on comms? What if my moth was like, all right, I'm ready to go talk about and he's like, I'm not here right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know my job is your driver, but uh, I'm like out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean she can't have one driver. She has to have multiple drivers, right? Just in case. I think, she has, I think she has I think she has one driver. One driver. Okay. So if he's he's off work then she ain't going nowhere yep, yep. delivery yep. Mm-hmm. so this is oh what's his name brasso brasso who's a the big dude good guy on ferrix and yeah. marva asked uh brasso to relay her final message to Aunt, uh, cassian in the sewers and here are their faces what he's, a good mom. Yeah, he's learning about his mother's message. Um, Brasso is delivering it. Just strained faces. Brutal. 
I like how you can see the the difference between the parenting styles of Marva versus Cyril's mom. Like it really affects their their <laughs> their personalities. So it's right, right? Yeah, yeah. Like even when Marva's dying and she like and Cassian left her on this planet, like her final words are very supportive. Mm-hmm. Like you have everything you need to know, you feel everything that you need to feel, like you can do it. Mm-hmm. Good mommy. Well, this is another shot of the city on Ferrix, uh, which we haven't really seen this angle before. Um, Agreed. So it's kind of interesting because I guess the the um, sh- the salvage yard must be behind us because we don't see them. Yeah, I think this looks like a building from the salvage yard. Exactly. And then this looks like this section here looks like an industrial area we've never seen before, and I think. The town is in this valley back here. I think so. Yeah, seems reasonable. Yeah. So this is kind of a different angle we've never really seen before. This mm-hmm. the economy of this place is incredible. It's hustling, bustling. Yeah. The scene so nice. Yeah. It's like they exchange hats, and I cannot f- figure out why they would do that other than friendship they're friends yeah hey remember me here's my hat even in the imperial corporate complex friends exist they are human just nice touch kind of it's a human moment even though they're kind of on the evil side they're just people living in this galaxy that's right yeah So this is in that town on Ferrix, and I was a little shocked by the Empire's, I guess we're going to call it arrogance, because... Complacency, sloppiness. So over here is that hotel that they set up as Imperial HQ on Ferrix, and then this guy and these guy are Imperial officers on patrol or something right next to HQ, and actually Cassian is up here, right up there. So they have yeah. unsecured, you know, open windows right next to Imperial HQ on Ferrix. I mean, the complacency is real. And they've been stationed there for several months. They've had plenty of time to secure all hidden passages inside the building immediately adjacent to them. That's right. <laughs> they just they just didn't. They just didn't do it. There was a guy who was like, hey, what's with the, the open bricks up there? And they're like, whatever, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about we'll it. poke our head in. Nothing. All right. Yeah. How do you even get up there? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I mean, it. if they were really concerned about the security of that, they could have just blocked the the ladder, right? Just block it off. This is now a Imperial safety zone. Well, okay. they do, do they do they even know how to get up there? I thought Castian went up a in secret passage. They, oh, so no, the secret it. passage is the grating that goes underneath. The staircase, the, the ladder, they do know about. They did go up there and check for him. Oh, so it's not even a secret passage. It's just, there's just a ladder. It's just a ladder, just a to ladder with, open. with an open space that they don't take care of. They didn't check. Yeah. Yep. Okay. If it's a plausible, questionable security risk, they should just block it. Block it off, yeah. Eight months. Yeah, crazy. So this confused me a lot. Luthen decides to go by himself to Ferrix to kill Cassian. Now, killing Cassian could make sense because he's trying to, I don't know, control the information about the rebels. And Cassian's kind of this loose cannon. So if he takes care of him, then the information is He's not a loose cannon. He's a loose thread. If the Empire pulls on it, they could track their way back to Luthen, and now he's the axis. He's the network between the different cells. And from his perspective, which I think is right, Cassian needs to be silenced. That's right. It's too risky. Right. That's better. He's a loose thread, not a loose cannon. Right. He could be a loose cannon, but Luthen doesn't really know. He's a loose thread. He needs to take care of him. So killing Vel's Cassian. Yeah. Vel can be loose cannony. But why did Luthen need to go to Ferrix himself? Especially because Vel and Cinta are already on the ground. Right. And Cinta, you know she's going to take care of business. 
Yeah, you just say, hey, kill this guy. She's like, uh, no. I'm not sure. I'll just kill them all. No problem. I'm Sinta. No problem. I'm Sinta. Yep. Is it for the rebellion? It is. I'm doing it. Doom. So, yeah, I think for Luthan, it was a miscalculation coming to the Ferex himself. Agreed. And he didn't accomplish his mission. Well, he kind of accomplished his mission at the end, but not really by his own doing. By accident. He fell. Actually, he could have died. That's right. He really flubbed. Or even worse, his identity exposed. Yep. Brasso. Everyone needs a friend like Brasso. Yeah, absolutely. Carrying, carrying Marva to uh, the ceremony. Mm-hmm. And I see, I see it now. I see why this community really takes care of their facilities, because it's it, for them, it's honor, it's tradition, it's it's their culture. Their their buildings are made from the bodies of their ancestors. This is beautiful. This is this is a, an amazing place to live. Mm-hmm. So we were wondering in the first several episodes why this town seems to be so clean and well run and maintained just tidy just because they put the their ancestors ashes in the bricks of the buildings so disrespecting the buildings themselves is disrespecting your ancestors amazing so maybe it's emotional manipulation by the government that's that's too negative This surprised me. The uh, that the um, the empire Surprise. allowed this funeral to get so out of hand, and even let Marva speak from beyond the grave to the potential rioters. I couldn't believe they let it get this far. They just, I mean, the <sighs> permit they, they so so the permit was supposed to be for thirty people. The the sisters, the daughters, daughters, the daughters of Ferrix were like, no, we want forty, and like. All right, we'll give you 40. And then way more than 40 people showed up. I'm surprised that the, the Empire wasn't like, uh, no, GTFO. Like, you can't have this many people around. Mm-hmm. But they let it happen. That's that's complacency. That's like that's the arrogance of the Empire saying, like, we're fine. They can do whatever they want. We'll just step on them and won't feel like it. That's right. And then it turned to... Turned into a turned, melee. It turned into a melee real quick. There was a... After, I think the... There was an imperial officer that came in and shut down this uh, recording, which the let, which made all the people on Ferrex riot. And you then, don't uh, hurt B. That's right. And then Wilman threw his pipe bomb into the crowd of imperials, and he it. And then some munitions went off, and it was all hell broke loose. It was crazy. It was it was super lucky it hit yeah. the grenades. Yeah, <laughs> super yeah, lucky. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could have been like right. a pop. I mean, it was like what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it was chaos for a while, and like people running all over the place. Um, oh yeah, in the and middle out of the, the chaos. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sinta's on the mission. So who is this again? This is the ISB agent working under Miro, and she put him on the ground to spy on Marva to see when Cassian's coming home. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of this battle, the the there's bombs and shit going off and this guy's just casually walking away because he's a cool isb agent and cinta even cooler follows him in she's got eyes locked on the target she's following him close behind and he recognizes he sees it he sees something's happening he turns around and he asks her he's like who are you he turns to intimidate her because he's an imperial officer but you don't push you don't push cinta Jeez. You don't push Cinta in the corner. Why? Because she got a knife. <laughs> she got a knife. Right. And she, she was so smooth. She like backed up like as if he was actually intimidating her. And then point, 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 point. Mm-hmm. Two stabs. Easy kill. Yeah. I knew when the ISB agent was like, I'm going to intimidate Cinta. I was like, this guy's going down. No. You don't know who you're messing with. Don't Cinta. Hear. Cinta. And she did not hesitate. And we cut back to the battle, and Supervisor Miro whips out her pistol. Okay, super, okay. First of all, what a badass! So fucking, so fucking cool. But but you are the ranking officer on the planet. Get the heck out! Get the heck out and go set up your command base. You don't want your your command officer here because this could happen. Like she almost right. got hit in the head. Like yeah. all the operational knowledge of what's going on in all of her sectors almost gone. She needs to have bodyguards on her and yeah. get the heck out. Yeah, get out of the riot. Plus, she's not armored up like the stormtroopers or the, the infantry people. 
Right. So she doesn't have a helmet, she doesn't have any of that. So, I mean, morale booster for the troops, I guess, but. Right. Uh, she's, I mean, <laughs> she's leading from the front. She's That's pushed right. out in front of the riot shields. That's right. But yeah, I think it was a mistake. But then uh, Cyril actually, I don't, we, we don't have a picture Cyril, of it, but Cyril, oh, I don't Cyril know comes in and actually rescues her from, she like fell on the ground and she was getting kicked and stuff. And then he picks yep. her up and. He picks her up and her gun. Yeah, that's right. Detail oriented. Serial. So okay. But is... what struck out to me was the structural integrity of this hotel. The pipe bomb goes off, the grenades go off, and they go off right next to this hotel, and the hotel's totally fine. Totally fine. Yep. Then it's all this uh all this stuff gets blown away. The hotel? Well that's built. high quality. Yeah. That's high quality construction. Absolutely. <laughs> this is Sparta? Yeah, this guy watches three hundred. I, I mean, this guy's got to be super strong. He's swinging that hammer day in day out. Mm. What is the stormtrooper trying? Yeah, what are you doing, dude? No, oh, he's toast. Oh, and this is the escape ship. So mm. Cassian and rescues Bix, and they end up in the junkyard well i guess the repair yard for the the old ships and this is i guess pegla has this ready to go for him and some other people who are escaping end up in the ship and they they take off and go uh and i'm pretty sure this is the ship from the b that casting used at the very beginning of the show because i remember these two engines mm -hmm. from and, the backside though it was an interesting angle because like that really reminded me of y-wing engines yeah right there that definitely yeah. looks like a Y wing. I wonder if these are retrofitted from a downed Y wing, or maybe these engines are generic and a lot of people use them. I don't know. Let's take let's take a quick quick look up on what a Y wing is. Oh, good point. Y wing expansion pack. That's not what I want. True. Yeah, no, that's a good go. example. <laughs> <laughs> the BTL Y wing starfighter was a fighter bomber built by the Cone Sayer Manufacturing. Cone Sayer. First used during the Clone Wars. And throughout the Galactic Civil War, it was a mainstay of the I'm Alliance Starfighter Corps. It was often used as an assault bomber to attack enemy capital ships. Later in conjunction with later B-Wing Starfighters. Wait, what are B-Wings? What are B-Wings? Oh, these things. Oh, those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, we're looking for propulsion. Engine units. The, the R-200 ion jet engines. There they are. Hmm. Yeah, appearances. Did they say? Doesn't say. I don't see Andor anywhere. Uh -oh. uh oh. Maybe we're wrong. I don't know. No, so, we're right. We're totally right. That's totally right. That we're, to we're totally right. Oh. Look at it. Look at it. It's totally right. Totally right. I mean, we look, look at the not cartoon pic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this thing. Yeah, that's total. So that versus that. Totally why That's totally. That's totally. totally that's totally. Right. That's totally right. Young Leda. Young Leda, she's 13, going on Senator. <laughs> and here is Stecken. Stecken. Pretty sure it's Stecken. Stecken that's, how, yeah. that's how it's pronounced. I mean, I maybe it's Stecken? Stecken sounds so... Either way, bad name. Bad name. Also, why the mom look like that? A little Marge Simpson look. I was going to go Elvira. What's Elvira? Uh, if I remember, it's like a Halloween-y something. It's got like a lightning bolt up her side of her head. Um, Very Marge Simpson as well. Okay. But she's like, I don't know. She looks stressed. I, I have an idea that he looks like a kind person. Just looking at his facial expression. Stecken does. And then if we... Okay, it's taking too long. If we go to Lita, she also... I still, still think she has she has connections to the Rebels. And she also seems like a kind person. So maybe this couple together be a power couple on Coruscant and help the rebellion. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Don't know. We'll see. We'll see where they go maybe. with this. I think uh, this guy's name is. What is his name? Davos. Davos. Da Davos. Something. 
Davo, yeah. He's just assuming his son's personality is the same as him. Right. But that may not be true. And we're still not sold that this guy's a bad guy. He may be just putting on a front for the rebels, for the Empire, and he's actually sympathetic to the rebels. Not sure yet. He also may not be Empire bad, but just, you know, regular bad. Just regular, regular bad. Regular like mobstery kind of stuff. Yeah. Or, or even not necessarily hut and mobster, but just kind of rich dude. Right. And this is the last scene. Cassian. This is on. This is on Luthen's Luthen ship. It's on Luthen ship. Cassian surprises Luthen. Yeah. He yeah. surprises Luthen on Luthen ship. So Cassian knows that Ca- that Luthen wants to kill Cassian to close that thread. Because why else would he be there? Yeah. And Cassian sees the only way out of this situation is to go to Luthen and say, "Hey, I'm going to join." So instead of being a loose thread, Cassian can now be an asset to Luthen. Man, That's... I guess I see it. I see it. And after his experiences at the prison, knowing that the Empire is brutal and they don't care about people to step on anyone they want, the only thing you can do is fight back. You, you can't run because you can get caught up for literally nothing. All he did was walk on the beach. That's right. And but so he walked by on the, joining walked forces. On... He walked which, on by joining forces poorly. with Cassian. Oh, that's right. That's right. He walked on the beach a little bit too fast. He he, uh, he got a little bit too much cardio in there, sweating a bit. Not cool. Not cool. This mm-hmm. is a pleasure beach. Only right. casual walking. Sit down. Enjoy the sun. Agreed. By joining Luthen, he also gets out of the hunt from by the ISB. He that's also right. gets protection as well as being a weapon. That's right. That's right. Super smart. What a mm-hmm. clever way to do that. To be like, here's the gun. I'm trusting you. Take me in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dangerous yeah. though what a risk yeah and this and here's is the, the last this is the hidden ending where we see the parts that Cassian and his fellow prisoners were assembling get put well let's just look at the sequence here these little, see robots. These little tiny baby droids yeah. see little cuties carrying the assembled piece and the little mm-hmm. droid carrying it. And then they're putting the assembled piece into this vertex right here. Six-sided vertex. Little droids working their way. Can and we zoom out some more. And they're putting together, it looks like solar panels or some kind of reflective panels. Not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We zoom out even more. And that definitely looks like the cannon on the Death Star. Mm-hmm. This dish is Under, a dish. Yep. Yeah. And then Death Star is almost complete. The weapon is getting inserted. Yeah. Yeah. So the assembled piece was part of the supply chain for the Death Star. (gasps) Cassian is indirectly responsible for Alderaan. Yep. He had a hand in it. He had a hand in it. A helping hand. He built some stuff for it. He built some stuff, yeah. What caught my attention was assembling things in space. Like, mm-hmm. I th- I was like, this thing looks unstable. But actually, if you have a stable orbit, you just let it, let it sit there, and then you can work yeah. on it. And if you need to make little micro corrections, you can come in and make little micro corrections. Sure. But generally, it's just going to orbit with the same relative velocity, to, you know, relative velocity of zero, same velocity in orbit. Yeah. And you can stuff will just float next to each other. And why build something on the ground, which you would then have to get out of the gravitational potential well, using a bunch of energy and effort, is built in space. Built in space, yeah. Especially with these little robot baby droids. Like That's you right. just you let you give them the program and you say, here's all your supplies, assemble the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're having a debate about <laughs> how Cassian says, you know, humans are cheaper than droids. But then we're seeing these droids here, like assembling this. So these droids must be ridiculously expensive. And that kind of makes sense that the Death Star doesn't have any budget. It's just whatever it takes. Top secret, spend the best money you can on these little tiny droids. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's super expensive. But then maybe the parts suppliers, like the parts that the prisoners are making, have budget constraints, and so they need to use prisoners. Mm. I buy it. Seems plausible to me. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know where this is going. And I believe that's it. That is Andor season one altogether. Any predictions? I have a feeling that that Death Star is going to like shoot at planets and destroy them. 
And then maybe there'll be like a teenage kind of brat kid that comes and saves the day. Saves the day. I have a feeling too. How do we, this is always so predictable. Like it's not even. Yeah. I think Cassian I also, might, uh, might die. Cassian might die. I also have a prediction that pod racing will come back. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Serious question though. How, what is, what's going to happen to Luthen? You think he's going to die? Because he's never mentioned in any of the movies. That's right. Maybe he takes his combat pilot skills and he converts that into pod racing. Uh, but there's a pod racing failure after the Empire strike cracks down on it and uh, his pod racer explodes. So if he is a pod race pod racer, that means he's force sensitive. So he's actually a Jedi. He could he probably, probably more like a Mace Windu type Jedi who's like a mix of dark and light Yeah, for the rebels. Who but he gets, uses his force power for acting and for hiding his true intentions. That's right. So like a Palpatine situation. But for but, good. But, but, but for good. But for good. I'm down. I wonder if Luthen is force sensitive. And then Saul from the, Saul. the Rogue One movie and this show. That's right. He's never mentioned in the movies. So, I mean, I, I guess he dies in Rogue One. He dies in Rogue One, yeah. But at this point, he's a pretty prominent member of the Rebellion. I guess, I guess that makes sense. There's a lot of rebel leadership that will not make it, but not everybody knows everybody. All right. Yeah. They haven't yet formed the alliance. That's right. But they do talk about how there's different rebel groups all over the galaxy, but they haven't allied yet together. There's no alliance yet. It's when you know who comes in and everybody unites the Mon Calamari. What Admiral Akbar. Akbar. Admiral Akbar. When he comes in, everybody gets like, yeah, he's my leader. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Actually, maybe. Actually, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's charismatic. He's got cool ships. That's right. All right. That's uh, that's it. See you guys. Andor season one. For next season of Andor, whenever that is. <laughs>